What exactly does losing one's innocence mean? What does it reveal about them as a person? Well, it can signify many different things, from minute experiences of pain or worry, such as scraping your knee, being excluded by your friends, or being bullied, to being a part of life-altering events, warranted or not, that change life irrevocably. Cars on fire and ransacking businesses. Several... Whether it be the uncontrollable loss of a loved one, rape, murder, or self-inflicted dilemma, one thing is certain, this so-called loss of innocence is inevitable. This sometimes rude, sometimes gratifying awakening is portrayed many different ways throughout literature, with To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee as a prime example. Positive notion, Scout and Jen lose their innocence as they discover that ostracized Boo Radley has been leaving them gifts, that he is not the scary being they'd envisioned, and that he saved their lives. On the other hand, being exposed and being witness to the effect of a false accusation on Tom Robinson's life had an opposingly negative impact on the kid's innocence. Similarly, main characters Susie and Lindsay and Alice Siebold's The Lovely Bones fall victim to premature losses of innocence as Susie is raped and murdered and Lindsay is left in her dead sister's shadow. In film, loss of innocence is portrayed with a sense of unparalleled reality like in Brad Anderson's The Machinist. The main character Trevor suffers from insomnia and is shown as a helpless, emaciated man which evokes compelling pathos in fiction as readers sympathize for the perpetrator. In this case, his extreme loss of innocence was completely self-imposed by his guilty mind after having committed a hit and run and killing a young boy. Another example of a somewhat less life-altering loss of innocence takes place in Emile Ardolino's Dirty Dancing, as Baby follows the trend of growing up, falling in love, defying her parents' wishes, and consequently losing her childhood innocence. In Garth Davis's 2016 film Lion, five-year-old Saru is separated from his family in his hometown of Kongwa, Madhya Pradesh, India, and is adopted by a loving Australian family. Losing grasp on everything he has ever known and being flown across the world left him longing to be reunited with his childhood innocence linked to his hometown and to his family. Up to this point, the examples given have been pretty broad and you might not have been able to connect to any of them. Well, let's focus on Peterborough and Ontario for a little while. How do people lose their innocence in small town Peterborough? I'll tell you. By growing up, by realizing that the Santa at Lansdowne Place wasn't the real Santa, but wait, there is no Santa. Experiencing the first broken heart at the hands of the cutie whose parents took you to the Lindsay Drive-In or for a walk at Beaverview, or meeting kind-hearted homeless people downtown for the first time, like Dougie Johnson and Andre Lee, and wondering how they got there. Do they need our help? Will you be looked at funny for giving them your spare change? Let's get serious here for a moment. These are things that your everyday average person will experience no matter what, but for some it gets worse. Take Alex Bolier for example. August 4, 2010, her younger brother Etienne attacked, bludgeoned, and stabbed their mother to death in their family home near Tom A. Stewart. Alex, consumed with the guilt that she could have done more to protect her brother from himself and his mental illness, revealed that she had found knives hidden by her brother in his diary filled with vulgar entries and other concerning events that should have raised more suspicion. Etienne was later diagnosed with schizophrenia and could therefore not be held responsible for his acts. His unknowingly self-inflicted loss of innocence was a cause of devastating grief and forced his sister Alex to lose her innocence as a repercussion. Looking at the province of Ontario, there was a shocking number of Indigenous women who have lost their innocence while being raped, beaten, kidnapped, and even murdered. This is Annie Pritibu. She was an Anuk artist living in Ottawa whose body was found in the Rideau River in 2016. This is Azraya Akabi Coco Penes, who was 14 and living in Kenora when she was allowed to leave the hospital where she was being treated for depression and was found dead in the woods two days later. This is Karen Connolly, 54 year old Ojibwe woman living in Toronto. She was beaten and stabbed to death in an alley on Shooter and Sherborne. These women represent a small percentage of thousands and thousands of murdered and missing Indigenous women all over Canada. They were stripped of their identities, their dignity, and their lives. Meanwhile, most of them will not seek justice simply because they are Indigenous. In addition, Peterborough was the location for a white supremacy rally in September of 2017, protesting against immigration following the lead of white nationalist Kevin Goudreau. The Peterborough community counteracted his intents with events like Chalk Out, Turn Out, and Art Out. The loss of innocence inflicted by this event was monumental, as people of color were targeted and white people were not. This is an eye-opening experience for many, as the issue was shoved directly in their face. It was unavoidable. 
It forced them to envision people of color and their children with more clarity, as many children are born without a certain innocence that privileged white children have, which is being demonstrated in the world today. We actually have a line that we do at our house. We practice this thing. What is it? I'm Ariel Sky Williams. I'm eight years old. I'm unarmed and I have nothing that will hurt you. It's just kind of a thing we practice at our house. In closing, what I wanted to get out in this documentary was that the loss of innocence truly is inescapable, but also that it comes in a vast variety of ways, some less life-altering than others, and some more so. The moment when one loses their innocence is like their fictional moment of peripatia, reversal, the beginning of a new chapter, for better or for worse.